I am Henry Newfeld of Energion Publications, and I'm hoping that you have had an expectant Advent season and will now experience a joyous Christmas season. I mention Advent in particular because expectation, waiting, is something that we don't like very well. We often talk about the commercialization of Christmas. We talk about the extra gifts, all the buying, all the selling, etc. And I admit that I have some difficulty with uh, advertising for Christmas because I feel like I'm joining into the commercialization of something which is so definitely not commercial. But that's not the most important or the most damaging thing that we do to Christmas. Too often we make Christmas solely about what we receive. People talk now a lot about, you know, not making this about us. It is, however, about us to God. In the Christmas story, we see God reaching out to people where they are. Uh, people who are not important. People who are not in power. Uh, people who live in weakness. They are ruled by people that they would prefer not to have ruling them. And God reaches out to them in that condition, in that place. And then he moves forward by living the life that they would have to live. In my Sunday school class recently, I've been teaching from the book of 1 Corinthians, and uh, we did this to answer some questions dealing with spiritual gifts, dealing with unity in the church, with denominations, and so on and so forth. And there is a key point that Paul makes in 1 Corinthians. This starts at the beginning when he says that he determined to know nothing among them except Christ and him crucified. And from there, he goes forward to hit on the head all the ideas of spiritual pride. Being spiritual, being in Christ, doesn't mean you can do what you want because spiritually you're better off. Uh, communion is supposed to be for everyone, not for some to be superior. Uh, gifts are distributed uh, amongst the believers. This is God's uh, bringing of unity out of diversity and bringing diversity into the unity of the church in the body. And finally, ultimate spirituality comes uh, at the resurrection when we are again made in his image. This mortal puts on uh, immortality. And you may ask, why do I bring up the crucifixion and uh, then eventually the resurrection and even the second coming uh, when I'm talking about Advent and Christmas. Well, this is precisely what we're talking about here. Advent is that time of expectation that came before Jesus first appearing, and it is precisely the place that we are called to be uh, in our lives, living in a time of expectation of the coming of the King. And in that living... Uh, we are to be like Christ. We are to be in service. We receive grace, we give grace, but also in realizing that we receive grace, we realize that uh, the coming of Jesus, the being in Christ, accepting Christ, all of the various words that we use to the, for that, these don't mean that we have suddenly become special people. Jesus didn't come to lowly people because he couldn't find anybody important in the world. He could find people who were important. And if he had wanted to impress the important people, he could have done important things in order to impress them. But instead, he talked to ordinary people and he said to his disciples, you know, that the rulers uh, in the world uh, lorded over each other, but it's not supposed to be that way with you. And so the babe in the manger, the Christmas story that we have, uh, tells us that this is not about making us important. We can make things about our own importance so very easily. So we talk about uh, humbling ourselves, and we want to read right to the end where we'll be exalted, we need to be exalted right away. We need to be more important. We say, well, 
I am a poor sinner in need of grace, and now that I've received grace, I'm suddenly better than everybody else. Uh, I am a Christian, and therefore I am better than those people who aren't Christians. But that's not the message of this story. The message of this story, Jesus coming in a manger, is that this story is for everyone. And it is not a story about becoming important because the same babe who was in the manger was the grown man who went to the cross uh, for the people that he had served. And so this Christmas season, let's be thinking about the ways in which uh, we can serve. Let's be thinking about the ways that we relate to the God uh, who loves us, not about how we have become superior, not how we can separate ourselves or distinguish ourselves or make ourselves more important, because that is precisely what Jesus did not do, either in the manger of Bethlehem or at the cross. He did not make himself more important. Behind me on the bookshelves that you see, I have a collection uh, of various hippopotami. I have plastic ones, I have a stuffed one, and so on and so forth. I refer to them as my hippopotamus herd. This came because my wife found out that I like the song, I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. Uh, she gave me a picture of a hippopotamus that year. And then every year since, a friend of ours has uh, contributed a hippopotamus. Now this year, we don't have a manger scene in our house. We used to, but our cat thinks that uh, the major scene is a toy. But as we got uh, these various uh, hippopotami, uh, my wife Jody would put one of them in the manger scene. And inevitably, as the season went forward, someone would ask, you know, why is there a hippopotamus with the manger scene? There wasn't any hippopotamus there. And Jody would tell them, very simply, because in this place, in this place, everyone is welcome. Everyone is accepted. It's not about being more important. I hope you have a joyous Christmas season. <laughs>